I wanted to show you a few special features that you could use, so I made a shape and I'm now going to edit it. And this is simply an American flag on one side and a tile on the other. And as you've noticed before, I can change colors and backgrounds, but now I'm going to focus a little bit more on some of the other features. One of them is the ability to twist and taper and hollow out something. So let me uh, just show you what happens, for instance, if you decide to hollow something. At first, you may not see anything, but while I have this active, I'm holding control on the keyboard. And when I shift this around, you're going to find out that I did hollow it out. Oops, OK, here it is. It depends on the orientation here. It's a little bit hard to see. But I've hollowed this box out. Remembering that you don't have an infinite amount of space, it's a good idea to learn how to use your prims well. And so I'll set this back sort of a little bit more to normal. And so experiment with those different shape features. And I will now go over to another interesting feature called Flexible Path. And when I click this, you'll first have to move your object a little bit. You see that it's actually got some movement to it. I can uh, adjust a lot of these features. I can give it some wind, which is an interesting one. You can see you can make the flag appear to blow. And let me reduce that. I can um, determine how fast it's going to fall over by affecting the gravity. Um, I can modify the softness to have different effects as it moves. You know, it doesn't have to all move as rigidly. Another very interesting effect is down a little bit lower here called light. And I can turn it on, and you can't really see too much. But if I turn it to a night setting, and I'll set it back to midnight, you'll see that I do actually have a light being cast by this object. You can make lamps and other interesting effects this way. The intensity is high now. If I lower it a bit, you see it gets a little bit less bright. But I can also change the radius on which this light is being focused. So uh, I can create more effects that way. You can create various effects by also going under Object and looking at some of the characteristics here. Now, this physical is going to depend on the kind of object I have. Now, I have a, a cube here. So when I put it on Physical and click away, it actually drops. Had that been a circle, uh, a sphere, it would have been different, different effects. Also, if you set it to Phantom, and let's walk away. OK, and drop it. But watch what happens when I try to walk. OK, I can walk right through this. So if you're making things like windows and doors that you want people to be able to go through, one thing is to set this over. Whoops, physical, it's going to fall over on me soon. And um, I can take the phantom away, and I can take the physical away as well if I really don't want those characteristics. Some other useful tips when you're working with objects, I clicked back onto it. And you see that it's positioned within the virtual world itself. And when I hold Control on the keyboard and stretch it, I can actually see this kind of 3D grid that shows up. And as I'm moving it, you might notice that the coordinates that are being displayed are moved too. This can help you when you're lining things up. And you can do this either. Um, through the interactive handles, or you can also work by changing your position either through the up and down here, or you can type in different coordinates. Uh, you may have noticed, too, that as you were working, the coordinates were displayed on the top. It can be difficult to line things up as you're making them, so use a lot of these tools to help you figure out where your object's going to be within the virtual system of measurement. Of course, you'll want to experiment to find all of the interesting effects. And right now, I simply used a one prim object. But you can see how these effects work when you make more complex objects.